Uh, speaking of um, Peacock, uh, this was um, this was pretty stunning. Medi, I, you know, Medi's very good at, at questioning people, and it's somehow I don't know why people go on to a show. I mean, why I wouldn't go on to a show if I had anything I didn't want to say, because he just sort of like zeroes in exactly on the thing that will make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, um, he's very good at that. Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, you don't remember him? He's the guy from Georgia, resistance hero, resistance hero, um, who. You know, Donald Trump unleashed a, a world of of hate on this guy. And he recorded the call, right? Well, not just the actual call from, from, from Trump, which is true, but, like, there were death threats to this guy's family. Yeah. That were, in many ways, midwifed by Donald Trump. And uh, so you probably think, well, Raffensperger, this is a guy... He's got a bone to pick with Trump. He's, he's got a bone to pick with Trump. And, they're enemies uh, for life. Yeah. yeah, they're enemies for life. You would really think that if he was like, would I vote for Donald Trump? Well, let's watch. You've said for a year that you voted for Donald Trump in 2020. So if he, as looks likely, is the Republican candidate again in 2024, will you vote for him again? That is so far out in the future. There's so many people that are going to throw their hat in the ring. And I think we'll have a robust debate. And I believe that we'll have someone that will stand on character and have the moral compass to lead this nation. And if we don't, then we'll probably be out in the wilderness at least till 2028. So I'm with, looking forward and hopefully we have someone that does, that really can build the party. With respect. Because even if you look at... With respect, at Secretary Raffensperger, we're, we're out of time and I have to ask the question again. You've done a masterful job of avoiding a lot of my questions. So I'm going to ask it again. If Donald Trump is a candidate, you told me at the start of the interview, you're a Republican, you're a conservative. Are you going to vote for this guy? That's so far in the future. I'm not, I haven't even <laughs> thought about that. i got to get reelected next year. You're not ruling it out, which is astonishing to me. This is a guy who incited violence against you and your family and you're, not, and you're considering maybe voting for him. You're not saying tonight, no way am I ever voting for that guy. Was that a question or was that a statement? I didn't really understand. Uh, but what I'd ask, say I'll, is- We're out of time, but I'll ask it one more time. Can you say emphatically tonight that you will not vote in 2024 for the man who you say threatened you, incited threats against you? I believe in 2024, We'll have a, a person that can grow the party because we didn't have 50% of the popular, popular vote for a long period of time. We need to grow our party. We need to figure out how to do that. So we have an attractive message that actually embraces people, expands the base, and we can make sure that we win with 50 plus 1% of the people plus win the electoral college. High on a hill was a lonely goat herd lay, hood lay, hood lay. There's, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can interpret this, right? Mm -hmm. One is, here's a guy who just doesn't want to alienate uh, members of his party, and so he's just doing the, you know, not paying attention to it. Quote, I got to get reelected. Uh, I got to get reelected. I mean, that could be it. The other is that, um, you know, uh, that uh, he doesn't want to, you know, he's nervous about, you know, having people, you know, attack him again uh, with, like, online hate and this and that. Now, I don't want to be put in this position. But what's so weird about this is like, Medi's asking questions from a universe where it's like, we have a democracy that is like sort of, you know, just like a, 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 a functioning sort of, uh, you know, rational democracy. And Raffensperger's there. You can almost imagine that like in some type of complete or authoritarian world where it's like you cannot say anything against the leader mm -hmm. yes they it's taking your family away and this that but you cannot say anything against the leader now obviously you know that's these are two extremes because we don't live in a functioning you know a particularly functioning democracy and we don't live in an area but when those two meet it is weird it's almost like you feel like did they edit this together like Medi was actually asking the questions of somebody in a different, uh, you know, parallel universe, and Raffensperger is asking, answering his questions in different. I mean, and it's not hard to imagine that 
we could end up moving all into Raffensperger's world on some level. I mean, it is creepy. The whole Republican Party is in that world. We saw this in the in the Republican primary. Ted Cruz called his wife. Uh, Trump called his wife ugly. Said his dad killed JFK. Okay, fine. I'll go do phone banking from you for you. Mitt Romney came out and, and basically said this guy's a threat to our democracy and he's going to kill the Republican Party comes and little reek bends the knee essentially and and he <laughs> had that that's a game of thrones no reference. i knew it yeah and he he had that dinner with him and was begging for secretary of state and trump got off on not giving it to him like you talk about an authoritarian regime uh, on a micro level there's an authoritarian party in this country and they they show that, that like in their interpersonal relationships it, it mirrors what they want for society I guess it's more disturbing for me just because, like, I can understand Ted Cruz is out there because he doesn't want to alienate uh, Donald Trump's uh, base because he's going to run for president again. But I don't feel like Raffensperger is going to run for president. You'd think that, like, he'd solidified his support in Georgia. You know what I mean? Like, I'm running for city council and I can't say anything wrong about the, the leader of the, the titular head of the party. That's yeah. that's maybe where it makes most of the difference, though, right? It's, it's authoritarian maybe. conditioning. They just well, know they'll know of the guy. As, they'll they won't know much about Raffensperger in Georgia, but if he's being primaried, they'll know that's is. the guy that that right. So he's being primaried. The, the they they will identify him as that's the guy that isn't isn't with Trump that helps steal the election. He's being primaried by Jody Heiss, who's like a real Freedom Caucus psycho, uh, based but fully on like the twenty twenty stuff. There you go. Wow. That was just... Maddie's so... That was impressive. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Like I say, like, I, don't, I don't know how he gets any guests. Or it's just his show. bookers like, must be incredible. They must be like... Oh, these... you know, it's going to be like this. Maddie's out tonight. Yeah. What's so in come for on. Raffensperger? Like, we'll get on... Like, a, frankly, like, we saw the numbers. It's not very highly watched MSNBC show, but for a clip that could really embarrass us. Like, I don't understand it. I really don't. It oh, Maddie's like, not here tonight. You should come on. It must be how, like, Sasha Baron Cohen gets to talk to people for the, you know, Showtime Borat stuff. I mean, HBO. I, HBO. No, he's on Showtime now. Is that right? That, that, old, that, next, that new show is on Showtime. I forget. Uh, what is America or whatever. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, it's like, I, I I'd still never, I would love to know a little bit more about the behind the scenes of stuff like that, how they're able to finagle some of these interviews. I mean, he was able to interview Bernie on that first episode there, and plus a bunch of crazy right-wingers. Well, you can get Bernie. Republic. Bernie's going to go on. No, I get it. No, I know. This is a guy. He's got a was, bone to pick with Trump. He's, he's got a bone to pick with Trump. And, they're enemies uh, for life. Yeah. yeah, they're enemies for life. You would really think... <laughs> 